Hello and welcome to this thought for today. I'm thinking about yesterday's gospel reading, which was um, the first part of the story of Jesus talking about himself as the Good Shepherd. And um, uh, yesterday's reading talked about the, Jesus being the gate for the sheep, and then it goes on to develop this image that Jesus makes of himself of being the Good Shepherd. And I must admit that when it came time to write a sermon about this uh, image of Jesus as a good shepherd, it was one that um, really struggled to appeal to me and for me to feel enthusiastic about. Um, the image of the shepherd is not really one that we're familiar with in our society and the powerful connections with uh, the bravery and commitment of the shepherd and the relationship of the shepherd to the sheep, those sorts of things were... It seemed to belong to a past world. And also, I guess I was a bit put off by the many children that I thought uh, never left uh, left the church with never moving past in their religious spiritual formation of the blonde, blue-eyed Jesus with the cute little lamb across his shoulder. So it was sort of struggling with all this sort of stuff. But after wrestling with this reaction for um, quite some years, the meaning of story, the story of Jesus as the Good Shepherd came to life for me when I read somewhere uh, that um, the word that we translate as good can also be translated as beautiful. So Jesus becomes the beautiful shepherd, not the beautiful of the blonde, uh, blue-eyed uh, young man with the little lamb, but um, the, the meaning of beautiful. And beautiful for us can also have several images these days. It's a somewhat overused word and it can become, would be quite trite and banal. But beautiful here, as in the beautiful shepherd, is beautiful uh, in the sense of causing the, the same beauty that can cause us to be deeply moved by profound music, a poem, a, a book, a work of art, perhaps the um, physical grace of an athlete or a dancer, uh, the, a type of a wonderful, moving beauty that causes us to be uh, deeply moved, touched at the deepest part of our being and leaves us breathtaking and in awe. And for John, Jesus as the beautiful shepherd doesn't refer though to what Jesus looked like. It's about the sheer attractiveness of what he as the shepherd was doing when he calls people want to come and when they realize his love is so beautiful that he gives his life for them that they want to follow him even more and the point of calling Jesus the Good Shepherd is to emphasize that strange compelling power of his love the same power that the French artist Georges Rouet upon coming to Jesus later in his life spent much of the rest of his life painting pictures of Jesus' face, wanting to create an image so compelling that people's lives like his would be instantly changed. In this way, Jesus, the beautiful, the good shepherd, is the one of whom the saint in the Middle Ages said, I saw the human face of God and my soul was saved. Thomas Traherne, the uh, last of the 17th century Anglican uh, mystics uh, uh, talks of the beauty of the life that Jesus invites us to, the new layer of consciousness that calls to us. He wrote, Your enjoyment of the world is never right until every morning you awake in heaven, see yourself in your father's palace and look upon the skies and the earth as celestial joys. You will never enjoy the world aright till the sea itself floweth in your veins, till you are clothed with the heavens and crowned with the stars and perceive yourself to be the sole heir of the whole world and all people sole heirs as well with you. Till you delight in God for being good to all, you will never enjoy the world. This was the beautiful vision of life that Jesus came to lay before people about what life was meant to be and could be and about his own part in this as the Good Shepherd 
who makes his invitation and makes it possible by giving his life for those in his care. The beautiful shepherd. Hence John closes this section of his description of Jesus as the good shepherd with Jesus' words, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. So may God's blessing be with you today and, um, and in the time to come. Amen.